Hello everyone and welcome to another video. Now, are you looking for a cheap, brand new CPU that will work on the AMD AM4 platform? Well, look no further than this. This is the A69500E, and if you go to ebuyer.com, you can find this for just £1.98. Add to that the cheapest delivery option, and you've got yourself a CPU for less than a fiver. But is it worth it? Well, today we're going to talk about my experience using this thing, general usage, gaming, things like that. Because while this price does look pretty tempting on paper usage wise, well, I'm not going to beat around the bush here. Let's cut straight to the point. It was quite horrible. So let's talk about the A69500E. Now, a while ago, AMD were actually offering the standard A6 9500, the 65 watt version of this chip, as part of their uh, BIOS boot kits. You could actually loan one of these, slot it in a motherboard uh, that wouldn't post with a newer processor, update the BIOS, and then I think they'd expect you to send the chip back. I'm not sure if they still do that. Anyway, this 9500E is actually a slightly lower watt version of that chip. This is a 35 watt CPU, but just like the 9500, it has two cores and two threads. So as you can imagine, it's not the most pleasant chip to be using in 2025, especially with modern operating systems such as Windows 10 or 11, if Windows 11 is even supported. I couldn't find it on the list. Now, to be honest, I expected a lot worse from two cores and two threads. General browsing usage, watching YouTube videos isn't the most pain-free experience, but it does work. I plugged this into an A320M uh, A Pro MSI motherboard, Stuck in 16 gigs of 2400 megahertz RAM, the fastest I could get working with this thing, and then we were away. And to be honest, it, it, I've used worse, put it that way. Now, what I will say is that eBuy originally sold this with a B450 Bio Starboard, a really cheap CPU motherboard combination, and the chip didn't actually work in that board. In fact, a few boards I've tested. Uh, be it B450, A520, were not compatible with the A69500E or the normal A69500 for that matter. I'm not sure if they've had like a microcode update in the last couple of years that's prevented compatibility. Maybe they did work at some point, but I think the BIOS that a lot of these boards ship with is just incompatible with these ancient AM4 processors. I've got a couple of A320 boards and they both did work, so that's worth bearing in mind. You can pick those up pretty cheap used, so it's not hard to put yourself together a really cheap combination. But your best bet is certainly a cheaper first gen Ryzen CPU instead, the 1600 for example, which you can find 25 30 pounds. Now the A6 9500E actually has integrated graphics as well. They're not up to much, but I found that you can actually run old games with plus 30 frames per second. If we take a look at Skyrim here, it's running with over 30 FPS a lot of the time. There will be some horrific stutters. This is impairing with 16 gigabytes of 2400 megahertz DDR4, two 8 gigabyte modules. I also found that Left 4 Dead 2 ran pretty well, even better in fact than Skyrim. Again, we're using the same 720p lowest settings, but plus 60 FPS wasn't too uncommon to see with this one. So if you really do want something extremely basic, very cheap, then you know, it's, it's not the worst setup I can envision. And of course it gets you on a modern platform that can be upgraded at a later date. I then wanted to try Cinebench 2024, but it crashed every single time, so that wasn't happening. Uh, so instead, Cinebench R23 it was. After a long while, we got a score of 598. I'm just going to throw up a result of uh, a Ryzen 5 1600 or 1600 AF for comparison so you can get a rough idea of how this two core A69500E compares. Yeah. But now it was time for the gaming results when paired with a discrete GPU. So I actually paired this with an RTX 4060. It's completely overkill, not the sort of real world um, pairing that you'd expect with an A69500E. If you're using a 4060, you're probably going to want a Ryzen 5 3600 minimum or an i5 12400F. In both situations, you're gonna experience some CPU bottlenecking, but not as much CPU bottlenecking as I experienced here. Well. When the games actually worked, it was very hard to tell. I didn't want to just throw in a selection of old games that we knew would work. I wanted to put this into perspective of someone who wants to play some slightly newer titles as well. So I tried some of my favorites, starting with GTA 5 Enhanced. Nope, this crashed. 
Kingdom Come Deliverance 2 was up next, and although I thought it was going to actually run, we got a black screen. The mouse cursor did load, the custom game mouse cursor, you know, the little golden arrow thing, but that was it. It got my hopes up a little bit, and nothing actually came of it in the end. Cyberpunk 2077 has given me problems with dual-core CPUs in the past. If they've got four threads, then they will sometimes work. I think the Pentium G4560 is an example of that, or at least I think it worked last time I tested it, but here, nope, not happening. <laughs> Pretty much everything I threw at this thing either crashed or froze the system up in one way or another. But there was a saving grace to all this. I tried Red Dead Redemption 2, not expecting much. Fired it up with the ultra texture setting and everything else set to medium, just like I'd normally do with a 4060. It ran pretty well on the Ryzen 5 1600 and 4060 combo, though obviously we were still running into some CPU limitations. And with the A6-9500E, a dual core, two thread CPU, well, see it for yourselves, about 10 frames per second. Well, between 10 and 20. In some areas I did actually see plus 20 FPS, you can achieve this by looking up at the sky, but that's no way to play a game, really. Yeah, I mean, it started, it ran. Is it playable? Absolutely not. Should you buy an A6 9500E in 2025? Probably not, but this is an option that's out there. Last time I checked, there was like 2,000 of these bad boys in stock. So if you're looking for something really cheap, you want to pair it with an A320 board, I'd recommend really looking into uh, the supported CPU side of things you know every motherboard page has a cpu support list please check that out because there are a lot of boards or at least from what i tested that will not work with this thing whether they did at some point i don't know but if it's not on the compatibility list then it's not worth spending money on a board because you'll only be disappointed i think sticking to a320 with one of these is going to be your best bet and you can still upgrade later on if you want to if you want something you know just to test motherboards just to test that your old board is still working just to boot into windows something like that troubleshooting perhaps i'm probably going to keep this in pairing with an a320 board just so that i can test used graphics cards before i sell them on there are certainly some uses to a weak chip like this and for two quid plus another two or so pounds postage not a bad shout in my opinion, but there we go, the A6-9500E. Not good for anything particularly intensive or modern gaming, but even with the integrated graphics, you can play some of your favourite older titles, that's for sure. And for basic computing, even with modern operating systems, yeah, it's going to do okay. Not okay in the same sense that Horizon 5 1600, for example, is going to do okay, but okay as in you probably won't pull all of your hair out using it look i mean i've still got mine most of it anyway it's certainly disappearing at the front these days but as for this one thank you for watching i'll actually leave a link to the ebuyer web page for this cpu this is not a sponsored video i don't really do those so uh just something i noticed i bought it a while ago with the motherboard bundle that ended up not working i think i paid like 30 40 pounds for it it came with the cpu for free obviously they noticed that it wasn't compatible so they just took the board away and then sold the cpu separately for two quid and at that price very hard to complain thanks for watching and hopefully i'll see you all in the next one